Hey, it's me, MLB. Got a new book for you all. This one is titled Touched. It's a Hawks X shy female listener. Um, there are some suggestive themes in this book, but I will censor them as much as I possibly can um, or skip them entirely. <laughs> I'm not going to be. I can write smart. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know how I would go reading it out loud. So that's going to be cut completely. Sorry. Uh, I will be censoring the swearing or changing some of the words just so that it fits in with YouTube's criteria of what is appropriate and what is not and also uh, to uh, gear it for more of a younger viewer friendly uh, audience. Uh, this book was on Wattpad. Um, it got removed unfortunately at 3 million reads uh, so it was one of my more popular books. Um, it is still available to read though as an X reader on my quirky fanfix site. You can find the link in the descriptions. Just please be advised that the book on quirky fanfix does have all the adult scenes, does have swearing, murder, kidnapping and a horrific scene where a certain Beyonce loving male threatens to snap the heads off somebody else's daisy flowers. To those who have read Touched, you'll probably be smirking right now. You know exactly who I'm talking about. And to those who don't know who I'm talking about, you'll just have to wait and see who that wonderful person is. So without further ado, let's get into it. This is Touched, Chapter 1, Application. As far back as you could remember, you had been told not to use your quirk, nor were you to tell anyone about it. It was a secret, and you just accepted that. Your dad had told you the story behind why you were never to use it, and it scared you so much that you just blindly obeyed. Whenever anyone asked if you had a quirk or what it was, you'd just tell them that you didn't know or that you didn't have one. No one actually believed that you didn't know, but the more they pushed for an answer, the more you would go quiet, so they'd eventually stop. You were a quiet, shy person to begin with who was prone to social anxiety, but having said this, you were extremely intuitive and empathetic. Often going unnoticed by people, like a fly on the wall, you'd hear and see everything, which sometimes made you want to use your quirk, so you would, secretly. It was a crisp winter afternoon and the sun was setting. You and your dad were on your way to the local corner store to grab some things for dinner. This will be a five caller for sure, your dad mumbled as his eyes scanned down the shopping list that your mum had written for him, his hot breath causing a light fog to escape his lips every time he spoke. You smiled to yourself. Your mum had given him a pretty long list of random items to get and your dad would always call her if he didn't know where something was in the store or if he wanted to clarify something that she had written down and he would often rate the difficulty of the shop by the amount of calls that he'd need to make. Gram masala? What the heck is a gram masala? Your dad muttered as he walked, still looking down at the list. Make that a six caller. You giggled softly and pulled the scarf up closer around your neck and lower half of your face, snuggling down into it. As the shop loomed ahead, you noticed someone sitting on a bench just outside the door, a takeaway cup in hand. It was cold out, so the person had a thick snow jacket on with fur hoodie pulled up over their head. They had their head down and shoulders slumped. Who would be sitting outside in this weather, you wondered curiously, watching them intently as you got closer. You saw them raise up a hand to their face and wipe an eye as they sniffed and your heart broke a little for them. Oh, are they crying? You thought sadly as you approached. I need to help them. I don't know this situation, but maybe I can give them a little hope, you thought as you neared them. Discreetly, you reached out and touched the top of their hoodie and kept walking, glancing back as you entered the shop. You saw the person lift their head and straighten a little and you smiled. A few more minutes later and they had stood up and walked away, looking a lot happier than when you'd first seen them. The smile remained on your face as you looked back to where you were going and your dad was looking at you. Your smile faded very quickly and you pretended to pick up an item and look at the ingredients. Your dad walked over to you. Did you just use your quirk? He asked with frustration boiling in his tone. Dad, I... You looked up at him with pleading eyes. Yin, I've told you not to use your quirk. How many times do I have to tell you? He uttered in a low, angry voice. I'm, I'm sorry, they just looked. I've told you time and time again not to use it. You've got, you're going to get us caught one day. And then what? It's jail for all of us. Is that what you want? He asked in a hushed, vexed tone, touching your shoulder as he spoke. You immediately felt remorseful. I'm so sorry, Dad, you whispered. I won't do it again. 
he said as he looked down at the floor. I'm doing this for us, your dad continued. All I ever wanted was a free life for us. No, what, not one where we were constantly watched by the government. I understand, he nodded glumly. I'm sorry. It's okay, beautiful. I still love you, your dad said, pulling you in for a hug. All of a sudden you felt relieved, light, forgiven. I love you too, Dad. I feel so much better now. Thank you for forgiving my slip-up, he said gratefully. It's okay, gorgeous girl. Now, let's get this food for Mum. I'm starving, he said brightly as he headed off down the food aisle. You let out a lightly troubled sigh as you watched him go. Will I ever be able to live a carefree life, Dad? What about me? You sighed internally as you watched him crouch down and scan the items on a bottom shelf. You had finished school and you were looking for work. Not being the most outgoing person, you just wanted a quiet job, preferably in a cubicle or small office where you could hide away and do your eight hours, then go home. You had applied at three places and were awaiting a reply from one of them, any of them. The first place was at your local bank, counting money and stacking it. You knew the money counters got to sit in a back room and count money all day. It was a job that required a lot of concentration, so it was understood that you didn't talk to them while they were working. Perfect. The second place was at your district's local hero agency. They were looking for someone to do payroll. You were guaranteed a small office on the ground level at the back of the building where you could tuck yourself away and sort out everybody's pay and leave. No one paid attention to the payroll officer. So again, this was another perfect job. The third place was a district mail officer sorter. Another job that required you to be away from people and tucked in a back room focusing on the job at hand. But you knew that male workers in your area often like to chat and gossip. So maybe this wasn't the most ideal for you. You were regretting applying for that one actually. You knew the mail sorters didn't focus on their jobs properly because they, you were forever getting Mrs B's mail. She was the lovely lady next door with a young baby. Very friendly and although she talked a lot you didn't find her scary at all. I hope I get the bank or the hero agency place, you thought, as you looked through some spices on the top shelf, looking for garam masala. I should be hearing from one of them soon. And that is the end of chapter one of Touched. Stay tuned for chapter two.